Time once again to go back into the archives. Welcome to Vintage Games here on the NHL Network. I'm Dan Pollard. Today I look back at a 1965 semifinal matchup between the Chicago Blackhawks and the Detroit Red Wings. The Wings opened the series with two straight victories, but were on their heels for Game 5 as the Hawks came storming back with wins in Games 3 and 4. Let's pick up the action on April 11th, 1965, Game 5 of the semifinal series between the Wings and the Hawks. Hello, Canada hockey fans in the United States. Doug Hewitt here at the Detroit Olympia. One to nothing for the Chicago Blackhawks over the Detroit Red Wings. As the Red Wings have a man advantage playing six men to five for the first time in the game. It comes back to Piker McDonald. There's the shot. Knocked down. And Bobby Hull clears it to Nestorenko down the ice. Over the blue line. And he lost the puck at the Detroit defense. Piker McDonald back. Detroit with a man advantage. Gordy Howe coming up the center ice. Chicago leading 1 0. A pass for Boyd Smith. He races to the board. He's knocked down by Bobby Hull. They all pile and hold it there for a faceoff. It was Mr. Anko from Hull and Ravlage at 8.37. Penalty so far. Barkley for tripping at 141. Bonobo for boarding at 619. And Hay for elbowing at 1345. They are now at the 14-26 mark of this first period. one nothing Chicago. Nestorenko from Hall and Ravlitz at 8.37. All set to go for the faceoff. It goes for Smith. Out in front for Howe. He can't get a shot. Let's it go finally and at the flex to the far wing. Smith back to Packer McDonald. There's his shot. Right on. Howe can't get the rebound. And it's Bobby Howe going after it down the left side. Now thank you. Slipping right out of Hull's stick to Warham. Warham going right in the wall. He shoots. Oh, he's a save. Back for Howe. At center. Over the line. Here's Smith going after it. Into the corner. Send it right across the front. Howe didn't see it. Howman gets it again. Back to Piper McDonald. A shot. Cleared into the crowd by Chicago. Four minutes and 51 seconds remaining in this first period. One nothing Chicago. Your attention please. Very warm here in Chicago. Here in Detroit Iger, tonight. Please report the main office. The Chicago Blackhawks making a change. Mr. Renko, Warham, along with Al McNeil and Matt Ravlich. And then Bobby Hell comes right out again. He just went over to the bench to sit down and he gets called back out again. Eddie Joyelle now at center ice for Detroit. Henderson and Jeffrey. Henderson after it. Still has it in the corner. Knocks the referee down. In fact, it's El Vecchio over to Howe. Howe lets the shot go. And all Fox, another shot. Oh, he hit the goal post. Joyelle hit the goal post. And it's cleared out over the blue line. Back into the Detroit zone for Gordy Howe. Eddie Joyelle hit the post. Back up the ice to center for Howe. Over for Del Vecchio. He shot it around on the board. Stan McKeever goes after it. Al McNeil shoots it down the ice. On the ice comes Hay now. So Chicago back at full strength. Pass to Gadsby. Over to Jeffrey. And Joyelle. Over the line. Trying to get his shot. It's right in front. And then that's holding wide of the Chicago net. Back up the ice for Warham. To Vasco. For Moans. Doug Moans on the left wing gets over the blue line. Back to Makita is given a bump. And Bill Gadsby has it ahead to Joyelle. Joyelle at center. Over on the left wing for Jeffrey and that's offside. One nothing Chicago. First period. Three minutes and 40 seconds remaining in this first period. The referee is John Ashley, number three, and the linesmen are Neil Armstrong, number eight, and Bill Morrison, number 16. Face off outside the blue line. Having a thunderstorm here in Detroit at the moment. 
Hooked his shot into the Detroit zone and up the ice now comes Ted Lindsay for Valfontaine. He gets his own rebound, knocks it into the corner. Lindsay going after it. He was taken out of the play by Pilat. It hit Lindsay. Trying to center it, Bobby Hull. Against the board with Lindsay. He sent it right in front. Oh, Breaker missed the corner with a backhand. And the Detroit Red Wings are missing some great chances. Fontaine over here to McGregor. He's turned around to Hall. Now it's Fontaine again. Over the line. Going after it. Trying to center it. Play is called. And here's a penalty to Chicago. Number seven. Phil Esposito. Well, now Chicago, Chicago, Chicago is going to run in the penalty. Two minutes for booking. The time, 17 minutes, six seconds. 17.06, booking. Esposito. Giving Detroit the man advantage again. Six men to five. Chicago leads in the hockey game, one nothing. Almond facing off. He gets it back to Del Vecchio. He shot it into the corner. Rebounds behind the net. Now McNeil losing it to Dillabo. Here it comes back to Del Vecchio. The shot right in front. Dillabo has it again. Coming from the side. Right in front. Almond is shot it wide. Another shot. Comes back to Howe. Now over to Del Vecchio. There's a shot. And that goes into the crowd. And they're doing everything but four. That last one right off the goalpost. Two minutes and 29 seconds remaining in the first period. It comes to Dillabo, back to Del Vecchio. To Dillabo, coming from the side, the shot, that's wide. Powell races in after it. Nesterenko's there to cover him along the board. They're trying to dig it out, and it's held for a face-off. Alman, Dillabo, Smith, Howe, and Del Vecchio. Nestorenko, Ravlich, McNeil, and Hay. The Red Wings putting on tremendous pressure here with a man advantage. It comes back to Howe. He's checked by Hay, and Hay gets it down the ice. Back for Del Vecchio. To Dillabo. Bob Dillabo down the left wing. It's center ice. Takes a long shot into the corner. Hay after it. Smith with him. Hay holds it against the boards with his skate. And there's no further play. A minute and 54 seconds remaining in the first period. 1-0 Chicago. Nestorenko from Holland Ravlich. 8.37. On the face off. Smith from the side, right to Ullman, and it went into a skate. Nestorenko to Hay, who bats it out and down the ice. Del Vecchio back for it. Del Vecchio at his own blue line, the center for Howe. Howe getting it back to Smith, takes his shot, and that hit Ravlich. Del Vecchio bearing it behind the net, Dillabo. And by McNeil, Ullman gets a hold of it in the corner. Back for Dillabo to the other side. Delavo still has it. Back to Del Vecchio. Del Vecchio gets around Nestorenko, closing in with a shot, and that's wide. Delavo centering it in front, and, and Makita picks it up. Out over the blue line to center. A long shot that bounces wide of Crozier. Del Vecchio for Alman. Less than a minute to go in this first period. Alman. Just as Esposito gets on the ice. That's the third penalty in a row to Chicago Blackhawks. Faceoff will be in the Chicago zone of the left. 
Chicago Philly, Vasco, two minutes for tripping. The time, 19 minutes, eight seconds. 19.08, a tripping penalty to Vasco. So the faceoff is in Chicago territory when they're ready. It's Eddie Joyelle, number 21, Ted Lindsay, number 15, Paul Anderson is 19, Warren Godfrey, number 23 for Detroit, and Marcel Pronovo. Now Bergman's coming out. Gary Bergman, number 18, to replace Pronovo. And for Chicago is Bill Hay, Al McNeil, Eric Nesarenko, and Matt Ravlich, number five. Glenn Hall playing goal tonight for the Blackhawks. Roger Crozier for Detroit. And from the faceoff, Paul Henderson along the board, centered it right in front. It's handed back to him, to Bergman. Bergman takes his shot. There's the goal! Scored with Vasco in the penalty box. Goal scored by Lindsay. <laughs> Assisted by Bergman and Henderson. The time, 19 minutes, 19 seconds. Lindsay from Bergman and Henderson at 19-19. Ties the score for Detroit. Henderson coming down the right wing. He gets in on the right side. He's closing in. And he was chased off by Pallott. He ran into Nikita. Lindsay hits Warren. Goes out over the blue line. 18 seconds remaining in the first period. It goes to Vasco, number four, over to Pallott. Out over the blue line, up the center. Got it over the line and Lindsay has it. Lindsay coming back. Hill has it. Hits his shot. Vasco bats it down. Clears it out and down the ice to Gadsby. Gadsby takes his shot. There goes the buzzer and the first period is over. Good evening, everyone. Welcome to Hockey Night in Canada. Ward Cornell here along with the other regulars from our Toronto TV crew, Ed Fitkin and Jack Dennett. And we're watching a most exciting hockey game. With the highlights from the first period, Ed Fitkin. Well, thank you very much, Ward, and it certainly was an exciting first period. Chicago had a decided edge in the early going because Detroit drew two penalties. Barkley was hurt when he tried to stop Chico Mackey along the boards. He fell into the boards head first, suffered a slight concussion. He also drew a penalty, and that gave Chicago the attempt, their first chance, rather, to uh, put their power play into action. On one particular play, Hull and Makita combined to set up Kenny Warham. Warham was dead in front of the net, and he fired, and Dennis Crozier kicked the puck out, and he made a couple of other saves before that sequence ended. Here's how it looked. Gordy Howe, Marcel Pronovo, and Bill Gansby trying to kill off the penalty to Doug Barkley. Being served by Joyelle. Up the ice now for Bobby Howe. He's checked. And Pierre Pilot checked. Finally clears it over to the fire wing, and Stan Makita has it for Bobby Hull. Bobby Hull gaining momentum as he comes to center. Pass to Stan Makita over the line. Back to Warham. Warham shot. There's a shot and Crozier stopped it. Another shot. Crozier's got a hold of it. Of course, that was Roger Crozier that made the save, not Dennis Crozier. And then with the wings still a man short, Bobby Hull intercepted a pass by Norm Ullman in the Chicago territory and streaked away. He raced right down the center, broke through and uh, had a perfect shot at Crozier again. But this time, Dennis rather, Roger was equal to the occasion again and Hall just failed to score. And here's how that play looked. And then they lost it. That's it again. Over at Esposito. Joyelle is on the ice. Trainer back at full strength. He stole the puck but shot it down the center. 
Bill Gadsby over to Wyatt Smith. His shot knocked down by Ramlitz. Joyelle shoots it right back into the Chicago zone. Ramlitz. Checked by Elman. Elman in the corner. Clears it back. And Bobby Hull intercepts. He's down the eight. It's into the clear. Shoot. And he missed the corner. Back for Elman. At center. Over the blue line. A pass for Smith. And he shot it behind the net. Chico Mackey. To Bobby Hull. He's checked. Gets it again. Checked again. Ravlich is checked and is back in the Chicago zone. Esposito. And Matt Ravlich. Partico Mackey and is broken up by Smith of Detroit and shoots it right back in again. The puck was cleared down to the blue line and an attempted pass to Alec Del Vecchio hit an official. Bobby Hull knocked over Del Vecchio, picked up the puck, raced in on the Detroit goal, passed off to the right to Eric Nestorenko, and the Nestor found the corner with a shot from the side. Earlier the same play had just failed to click and now here's how that scoring play looked. Passing it to Nestorenko and he failed to center it. Now a foot pass for Warren Godfrey. I had to Marcel Pronovo. Up for Del Vecchio. And he can't get away. Del Vecchio is knocked down by Bobby Hull who takes the pass over the blue line. Nestorenko, he shoots, he scores! Nestorenko! Scoring for Chicago. Ladies and gentlemen, enjoying this electric atmosphere in the Detroit Olympia tonight are a number of the former Detroit Red Wings who have come back last weekend and this weekend for sort of friendly reunions with some of their old pals. Now, I think one of the incredible oddities of the Detroit Hockey Club is that for the past 30 years, the name Howe has never been off the roster. And I don't think there's any need for me to sort of recount and tell you what Gordy Howe has meant to this club. Gordy has been here since the 1946-47 season, but before that, from 1934 until 1946, there was another gentleman named Howe, Sid Howe, one of the most amazing hockey players this league has ever known, the man who holds the record for scoring the most goals in a game, six in modern times. He also scored the first uh, or the fastest overtime goal in 25 seconds. Sid Howe has come down from Ottawa to be with us tonight and Sid, I imagine you're having a wonderful time meeting some of your old cronies. Jack, I really am enjoying myself. Believe you me. It's a great game, too. Yes, it is a great game. What of the old uh, Red Wings that you played with have you been able to visit with today? Well, I, 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 I haven't seen Sid yet. I didn't get a chance. I didn't want to bother him, but I saw Carl Liscombe, and uh, I uh, saw Normie Smith, and uh, Al, uh, Roley Rolston, and uh, three or four others, Red Doran. And it's been very nice meeting them again, believe you me. Well, I'm going to ask you a question you invariably get asked many times a year, because as I said, the name Howe has been in the Red Wings for 30 years. Are you any relation, even a distant relation, to Gordy Howe? I'm afraid not, no. I think Gordy will make that very clear himself. You'd like to pick up his paycheck, though. I would, certainly would, <laughs> I certainly would, I certainly would. Uh, Sid, tell us a little about that, that game where you scored the six goals to hold the modern-day scoring record. Who was that against? I think it was against Rangers. I think the year was 1942, if I, my memory doesn't fail me. Actually, it wasn't... Uh, Any time you beat a team 12-2, to it's not a very good hockey game. It was a 12-2 to two score that 12 night, to two eh? 12-2 score game, yeah. But it's still in the record books as the... It's, it's a record, yes. Score. Now, this, this fastest overtime goal, 25 seconds. This, uh, this one I'm very proud of, principally because uh, it was just before that, uh, a year or so before that, that we'd had the longest game on record, I think you had Modere on That's last week. That's right. Three. Yes, we did. He scored the goal. And believe you me, hockey players don't like playing overtime. Believe you me, you don't get paid for overtime. So I was very glad to see it go in. Well, this must have been a goal almost immediately off the faceoff, wasn't 25 it? 25 seconds, yes. Any assist on it? Did, uh... No, I just I took it right on. Took it, came in from right right, uh, right wing. I came in from right wing and shot it. Well, you would have to take it off the faceoff. That's right. Swing to the right wing. And who did you score on that night? Do you recall? Uh, I can't even... I don't even know the fellow's name. I forget it. I see. Sid, uh, how many playoff series have you been? Well, I would say approximately uh, maybe 15, uh, three Stanley Cups, but I would say about 15 series that I've been in. Well, Sid, I know there's a lot of people around the Olympia tonight anxious to see you. You're getting handshakes all over the place, and your buddies are glad to see you. I'll let you get downstairs. Believe you me, I'm certainly enjoying myself. Thank you very, very much. And now back toward Cornell. 
And with us again, Harry Howell. And Harry, the folks at home saw a little bit of that period and some of the highlights, but I'd be interested in your evaluation of it all. Well, I think the score indicates uh, the play. The score is one to one now at the end of the first period, and both teams scored on power plays. Uh, during, during the time that the teams were at even strength, the play was mostly in the middle of the ice. I thought that uh, both defenses played very well and the forwards were back checking. I noticed too out there that uh, Bobby Hall is kind of up against it right now. He has a couple of uh, speed merchants in the name of Paul Henderson and Bruce McGregor watching him most of the time. Uh, McGregor watches him for half a shift and then Henderson comes out and watches him the other half. And I know these two boys, uh, they're very good skaters and they're going to give Bobby a hard time. Also, I noticed uh, during the penalties that uh, Alex Del Vecchio and Gordy Howe are doing the penalty killing. This indicates that Detroit wants to win this game very badly when they use their two top guns uh, killing off penalties as well as uh, playing the power plays. Mm -hmm. And uh, the goalies, of course, uh, Glenn Hall made some fantastic saves when the Hawks were short-handed. And uh, one of his uh, defensemen I'd like to mention too is Matt Ravlage. Matt uh, was playing second goaltender out there in the last two penalties that the Hawks uh, incurred and I thought he played very well. Roger Crozier made a very fine save on Kenny Warm, mm -hmm. and uh, he made a few other good saves too. Harry, what effect did both teams miss chances? The Blackhawks in particular had a couple of good chances to score. Uh, what happens to a team when they have these good chances and then it, it doesn't materialize, doesn't happen? Well, I'll tell you what usually happens to us, when we miss a good chance in the other team's end, they usually come down and score a goal. Mm -hmm. And I think that uh, most of the players will agree with me because uh, you just seem to have that letdown. You figure, now why didn't that puck go in the net? Mm -hmm. And right away you get a fellow like Gordy Howe or Alec Del Becky will pick up the puck and they'll come down and put it in your net. Now Barkley uh, has been injured, has a concussion, but did he not have an injury before tonight's game too, uh, Harry? Yes, uh, Doug has been troubled with uh, an injured groin for the entire playoffs and uh, we thought that that's probably what he had done again mm -hmm. from the press box but then we heard that he hit his head and has a concussion mm -hmm. and Murphy's out too. Ron Murphy is out and also Pitt Martin. Mm -hmm. Well thank you Harry nice to have you chatting with us as always and in just a moment we'll return to build you up play by play of the second period. And uh, just to go along with that they've added to their lineup tonight Murray Hall, Bob Dillabo and Warren Godfrey and both Godfrey and Dillabo have seen action. On the face-off, Al Fontaine missed a pass, then it's shot into the Chicago zone at Elmer Vasco. Shoots it out for Henry to fire. Marcel Tronovo to Warren Godfrey. He passes it for Val Fontaine, intercepted by Vasco. Clearing pass to Camille Henry to Bobby Hall. That shot hit Lindsay on the back of the ankle, and that hurt. There's a long shot that's wide of Crozier. Marcel Cronovo off the boards to center ice. Elmer Vasco shoots it right back in again. Door is tied, 1-1 one, one, to start this second period. Godfrey to Cronovo, a long pass for McGregor to Godfrey, and he cleared it right to Camille Henry. His pass on to Bobby Hull's stick. Bobby Hull is chased back at his own blue line. Now he comes down the left wing with a long shot. Rozier steers it into the corner. Marcel Cronovo to Ted Lindsay. Lindsay up at center. Offside to Bruce McGregor. McGregor didn't wait for Ted Lindsay to get over the blue line. He hopped in ahead of him. And of course, that's offside. Detroit outshot Chicago in the first period, 12-10. There were five penalties, three to Chicago and two to Detroit. That's Franco from Holland Ravage at 837. Lindsay from Bergman and Henderson at 1919. Del Vecchio, Parker McDonald, Gordy Howe, Bill Gadsby, Gary Bergman. And for Chicago, it's Nestorenko, Stanfield, and Hay. The attendance is 15,007 here at the Detroit Olympia. A pass stopped by Bergman, the flex to Hay, Bill Hay, a pass to Nestorenko. Nestorenko moving slowly, gains momentum with a pass to Stanfield. Over for Hay into the corner. Bill Hay sent it across the goal mouth. Anfield takes his shot, Crozier stopped, and Nesterenko shoots it. Crozier stopped that. Nesterenko going to the board, hit by Howe. Crozier's lost his goal stick. Parker McDonald coming out with a pass to Howe. One man back. Howe shoots. Oh, and Howe got his hand to win it. Still in the Chicago zone. 
how a backhand ends up on Ravlitz's stick. Matt Ravlitz over to Stanfield Center over the blue line. And his pass for Nestor Echo went off the stick. But he couldn't get it to him. Gary Bergman with Gordy Howe. Howe at center over the blue line with Packer McDonald and Del Vecchio. Howe went down. Packer McDonald has it. Back to Gary Bergman. There's the shot and it's up the line. Bill Gadsby's moved up. There's his shot and Glenn Hall has it on his chest. Dropping it to the ice. There's the puck. Score is tied 1 1. This has been a good hockey game. This has been a terrific hockey game. There's been a great contrast in these two series, I think, you know. There's no comparison between the style of hockey which is being played. Uh, this is the third game in which I, uh, uh, this series which I've seen, and I saw three in the other. And I think that the three Chicago Toronto games have been much the more exciting. Okay, and from the face off, Doug Moon in the corner. Coming up to his own blue line to center ice. A pass to Stan Makita. Stan Makita getting in. He shoots. Oh, and he just missed the corner. Elmer Vasco from the blue line. A pass for Makita. He's hit by Godfrey. It comes in front of the net. Marcel Bonneville, a fearing pass. Vasco shot it in, and that is offside. Coming up to the three-minute mark of the second period, the score is tied 1-1. Doug Moons, a pass to Pierre Pilat, cutting in from the right side, and it hit Dillabo, number 24. Pilat to Makita, a weak shot, stopped by Godfrey ahead for Alman, he just couldn't reach it. Moons shooting it back into the Detroit zone, Bob Dillabo, number 24, back for it. Behind the net, watched by Makita, gets away from him to Warren Godfrey off the board. Moons stopped it. Godfrey's pass to Alman. To Floyd Smith, Vasco ran into Smith, Godfrey bumps into Vasco, Makita to Vasco, offside. Outside and inside the blue line with the puck. And we're at the 326 mark of this second period, a 1-1 tie. The referee is uh, uh, John Ashley, number three, the linesman are Neil Armstrong, eight, and Bill Morrison, number 16. Puck is back in the Detroit zone. And it's Marcel Pronovo trying to bring it out. Too far for Elman. Here Pilat. Off the boards, Marcel Pronovo knocks it back, and Stan Makita's there, number 21. Makita to Pilat. To Vasco to Moon. Smith sk skates Moon's off. Here comes Godfrey over the line. A pass for Jeffrey. Jeffrey trying to center it. He's hit by Warham and Stan Makita. Feeds it ahead to Moans. Coming down with Pilat. Over the line for Pilat. He couldn't control it. Warren Godfrey to Larry Jeffrey. To Elman. Over the line to Henderson. Henderson waits. Takes his shot and that was wide. Elman right in front. Henderson shot it wide. Laid down the ice by Chicago. And that is... We're at the 4.30 mark now in the second period. On the faceoff, it goes to the corner. Cleared ahead to Camille Henry to Bobby Hull. Going down to center ice. Over to Kiko Mackey on the right side. Back for Hull. Right in front of the net. Roger Crozier knocked it into the corner. Eddie Joyelle. Bring it out. He's hit by Hull and knocked down. Kiko Mackey. Passing it. And Hull and Gatsby were high-sticking one another. A shot. Crozier steering it into the corner. Bergman to Henderson. Up for Joyelle, stopped by Camille Henry and his pass for Hull and Richmond. Henderson, on the right wing, a pass to Joyelle. Over the line, he's hit by McNeil, it's cleared back at center, Gadsby. And Hull, here's Henry over the blue line, takes his shot, and he hit the side of the net. Behind the net for Henry, coming out in front to Ravlitz. His shot, Henderson gets it ahead to Joyelle, one man back. Joyelle over the blue line, takes a shot, he's given a bump by McNeil. Ravlich coming back down the ice for Chicago to center ice. He gets up over the line, watched by Lindsay. Chased off to the board, hit by Lindsay, there's going to be a penalty here.
A holding penalty of five point six. Lindsay, two minutes for holding. The time five minutes forty six seconds. Score is tied, 1-1. One, one. Lindsay for holding at 5.46, and Jim, we now have things on the ice. <laughs> yes, again, uh, the uh, other series, I might say, I was a little surprised in Montreal last night. There was very little thrown. That used to be a great, great place for rubber footwear. I was a little amused to see Ashley call out a holding penalty. And my own impression sitting up here was that Lindsay tried to put uh, Ravley Joe into the street probably a couple of blocks away. <laughs> However, he had a better view than I had. The way these two teams play, they play slam bang hockey. Uh, although there have been injuries, the injuries haven't resulted from what I would call dirty hockey either, hard hockey. If you recall that injury to Jeffrey last night, Hull just went right over him. On the face off, it's Hay back to Talat. They have a man advantage. There's a shot, and that's wide. Alex Del Vecchio. Cleared it, but not out. Hay gets set. Pass it, hit front of those stick, and Del Vecchio comes down the ice, changes his mind, and goes back. Del Vecchio rags the puck with a pass to Gasby. Here's back to Del Vecchio. He cleared it, but not out. Here's Stan Nikita getting in front, and his backhand is wide. How shooting it off, Stan Nikita, but not out. Down goes Holmes. There's a shot, and that's wide. Comes back to Palat. Palat lets one go. Marcel Pronovo stops it. But couldn't get it out. Del Vecchio finally does down the ice. Here Palat going back for it. The score is tied 1-1 at the 6.33 mark of the second period. Here Palat coming up slowly to his own blue line. He gets to center ice. Flips it in. Warham and Howe. They go to the board. Howe coming up with it. Lost it. Hay takes his shot, Crozier stopped it, went down, the puck goes to, the, to Hay from Warham, over here to Pilat, back to Warham, over to Hay, Hay coming from the side, shot wide. Warham to Pilat, grabbed by Del Vecchio, gets away from him. To Stan Makita, to Hay, Hay still has it in the Detroit zone, over here to Pilat. Pilat fakes a shot to Warham. Warham centered it back, and it was too high, and Hay couldn't get a hold of it. Back for Hay. Down the ice, and center. Over the blue line, and dropped past the moon. Took his shot, cleared by Marcel Pronovo. Comes in front of the net. Marcel Pronovo let it go. Tico Mackey. Carrying it back for Pierre Pilat. He keeps it in for Chicago. His pass, hit a skate. Alman can't get it out. Lindsay's on the ice. Hay kept it in. Gadsby cleared it out. And it is in by Hay offside. As they say, wow. <laughs> that was quite a two minutes. All the time that Ted Lindsay was in there, I think Detroit had the puck, I mean, rather Chicago had the puck in the Detroit zone with the exception of the one occasion on which Warham, of all people, cleared it back into his own zone, trying to make a pass to the point. The game is moving along very quickly as we're coming up to the eight-minute mark in three seconds of this second period. The score is tied 1-1. One, one. Bobby Hull goes to center ice. Dennis Hull, number 10, out for the first time in the game, playing on the left wing. Chico Mackey on the right. Ravlet shooting it over the line. Into the Detroit zone, and Marcel Pronovo and Warren Godfrey back. Godfrey in possession, number 23. Off the boards to Lindsay, to Fontaine. Fontaine goes in over the blue line. Cuts in from the left side. Got down the ice by Bobby Hull. Goes over the red line. Pronovo back to touch it. That's I don't think I've ever seen never seen Bobby Hull skating faster than he was in that first period tonight. He was really flying, skating powerfully too. Anybody who got in his road was liable to go right through the ice. <laughs> All set to go now for the face-off in the Chicago zone of the lap. Al McNeil, number 19, to Bobby Hull, number 9, there we go to center right. Failed the pass to Dennis Hull, then gets his shot, and that's wide. Lindsay up for Fontaine. 
Lindsay trying to get away. Nico Mackey shoots it back into the Detroit zone. Roger Crozier off the glass into the crowd. Face off in the Detroit zone to the right. Now coming up to the nine minute mark in six seconds of the second period, a 1 1 tie. Bones coming out number two for Chicago. Dan Makita, Kenny Warren. And for Detroit, Alman, Floyd Smith, Gary Bergman, Bob Dillabo, number 24, and Bill Gadsby, number four. On the faceoff, Smith to Gadsby. Bill Gadsby goes behind the net, comes out on the left side with a pass to Gary Bergman. Number 18 goes to center right. Flips it for Alman over the line. He takes his shot. Ben Hall stopped it. Here, Pallott. Trying to bring it out. He did to San Makita. Over to Moans. Up over the blue line, there's a shot, and that's wide. But it was offside at the blue line. Chicago in their white uniforms. Red wing wearing their dark red. All set to go. From the faceoff, back to Vasco. Shooting it around behind the net. Stopped there by Roger Crozier. Gary Bergman, number 18, waits. Now starts on the right side of Crozier and just slapped it down the ice off the boards. A carom shot right on the net. And Len Hall for Pierre Pilat, who's bumped. Now here's the chance for Dillabo. Getting in front, his shot hit Vasco. Back comes Warham. Over the blue line. Hit by Bergman and knocked down. Nancy ahead to Smith. Over here for Dillabo again. He's in the clear. Right, right in that goal. He shoots. Oh, and he hit the goal post. Dillabo hit the goal post. And he went right in on the left wing. Smith has it in the corner. Trying to center it. Alman has given a bump. Down the ice comes Moon. Over the blue line. Into the corner. Trying to center it. He did. And it hit closure. Marcel Pronovo goes out on top of the place off is in the Detroit zone to the left. Del Vecchio Howe and Packer McDonald now. Hay Stanfield in this wrinkle. Hay centering it out in front. Howe's there. Gordy Howe. With Warren Godfrey. Off his stick down the ice. Al McNeil back for it. He shoots it right back into the Detroit zone. That's going to the red line and over. I think call against Chicago. You know, these uh, four teams involved in the Stanley Cup semifinals this year are undoubtedly the worst bunch of homers I've ever seen in my life. There have been nine games played so far, and so far not one of the visiting teams has ever been able to win one of those games. Okay, Jim, we're all set then for the faceoff in the Chicago zone on the left. And from the draw, Al McNeil goes behind the Chicago net. Still has it. Trying to get away from Del Vecchio. Picks his way out slowly. A pass for Stanfield. It was behind him. Del Vecchio gets over the line. Al McNeil gets in front of him. They go along the board. Al Vecchio kicks it loose. Nastarenko covered by Marcel Pronovo. Play is called. Off will be in the Chicago zone to the right. Now taking the face off. For Detroit against Bill Hay in Chicago. He gets the draw. Back to Marcel Pronovo. He fanned on his shot. Marcel Pronovo to Packer McDonald to turn to center. Shot it over the line. Van Hall stopping it for Al McNeil. Al nearly fell. Fred Stanfield comes straight up the ice at center. Goes over the line. He's turned around. And Master Pronovo clears it out. Bill Hay. Pass over for Nestorenko. Nestorenko tried to go through. Del Vecchio breaking it up. He takes a flip shot. Glenn Hall catches it. Oh, 
Bell takes his gloves off, and I believe the reason why he grabbed the puck was the fender snap. <coughs> That's one of those lingerie stops. We had one of those in the third period last night at Montreal, too. It's amazing how when it gets hot that it's always a goalkeeper's suspender that breaks. I don't think that Chicago probably would have survived this far without help. That's for sure, Jim. He certainly has been carrying the major portion of the load for the Hawks so far, anyway. He's on on power plays, and he's on when his own team is short -handed. Well, there's a new one. Bobby Hell just shot a rubber ball into the net. <laughs> Even if I was a goalkeeper and he was shooting a ping-pong ball, <laughs> I think I'd get out of the net when he shoots. Well, now we're all set to start play again. Ben Hall had his braces fixed up. We're all set to go. And from the face-off, here's a chance for Gansby and the shot to flex wide. Larry Jeffrey moves up with Pierre Pilat feeds it to Chico Mackey. And to Bobby Hull too far, and Bergman plays it for Henderson. To Jeffrey. Over the line for Joyal. He waits. Back to Bergman. Back to Joyal. And Bobby Hull takes it away from him. And Pierre Pilat covers up for him. To Vasco. Up for Hull. He's checked by Joyal. Over the line to Henderson. Trying to get his shot. Vasco. For Chico Mackey. Over on the left side to Dennis Hull. Over the blue line. Takes his shot and it deflects into the corner. Here around on the boards to Jeffrey. Jeffrey is crashed into the board by Hull and is going to be a penalty there. Up to Jeffrey. Over to Gadsby. To Henderson. To Bergman. They got six men on the ice. Made by Hull in. Glenn Hall making the save. Play is called and there's a penalty to Hull. Penalty, Hull, two minutes for Bordy. There is Hull in the penalty box, and I'm quite sure he has nothing against Jeffrey personally, but Jeffrey just has the very bad luck to be in his role. Well, 51 is the time for boarding. Detroit will have the man advantage, six men to five, the score is tied 1-1. One, one. We're at the 12-51 mark of the second period. Army Elman, number seven. Floyd Smith, number 17. And Bob Dillabo, 24. Alex Del Vecchio is 10. And Gordy Howe, number nine. In front of the face out. Dillabo to Del Vecchio. Back to Dillabo. There's a shot right on. Play it right to Howe. Howe waits. Takes his shot. Comes over to Del Vecchio. He took a whack at it. Elman shot it to Dillabo. Right in front. And it hit Al McNeil. McNeil gets up on his skate, holds it against the board, then it goes loose. Nesterenko traded right out of the house there. How shoot! And it was deflected over to the side. And Nesterenko brings it out. Covered. Alman brings it back. Over the line to Smith. Smith turns. Clearing it over for Del Vecchio. There's the shot. Ben Hall stopped it. Nesterenko can't get it out. Del Vecchio in front for Elman, and he was checked. That goes down the ice. Marty Howe goes back for it. Howe skating down at full speed to center. Over the blue line. Back to Smith. And he knocks it out off a leg to center. Bob Dillabo. A long shot. Deflects to Glenn Hall. Al McNeil. And he lifts it down the ice. El Vecchio going back for it. Five minutes and 45 seconds remaining in the second period. Ted Lindsay at center. Two Elmer. Hits it in. Stopped by Glenn Hall behind the net. He cleared it around on the board. Del Vecchio is shot. And that counts to the far side. Now it's Bones coming down the ice. Over the blue line. There's his shot. And Crozier stopped that. 
Del Vecchio, with Alman and Smith to set it. Alman a bouncer, and Hall stopping it. Alman after it, covered by Moon. Played out to Bobby Hill. He's got a breakaway. Over here, he's going in alone. Right in angle, he sees the score. Now let's look at the replay of that goal. Bobby Hull going all the way. At center ice on a breakaway. Chicago goal scored by Hull, assisted by Moans and Vasco. The time, 14 minutes, 59 seconds. 14.59, Hull from Vasco, 2-1, to one, Chicago. Now it's Chico Mackey. Taking a long shot, Crozier tipped it out to the corner. Dennis Howell centered it out in front. Warren Godfrey can't get it out. Vasco takes his shot. Warren Godfrey with it, number 23. Clears it down the ice at center. Going back forward is Pierre Pallott, number three. Pallott. Shot it around on the boards for Bobby Howell. Not by Godfrey. Shoots it right back into the Chicago zone. Vasco there. There's it off the boards. Marcel Pronovo keeping it in. Here's a pass for McGregor, and it went off his stick. Puck is shot down the ice by Chicago. Goes by to Crozier. All set for the faceoff now in the Chicago zone on the left. Makita, Warham, and Moan facing Montaigne, McDonald, and McGregor. Cleared out over the blue line. Godfrey knocked it back at the late whistle. Moans carries it out, though, so play will go right on. A shot into the Detroit zone. Down goes Packer McDonald. Moans steering it for Makita. He centered it for Warham. Here's Moans right in. And he couldn't get his shot away, and Crozier covers it on the side. Godfrey and Makita. They're swinging sticks at each other. Makita and Godfrey Teams will play five aside Makita going to the penalty box Chicago leads two to one Makita, Detroit penalty, Godfrey, two minutes apiece for roughing. The time, 16 minutes, 12 seconds. Well, I call it roughing. 16, 12 is the time. Games will play even, five aside, and there's more I'm staying out there with Moons. Bergman, Gadsby, Joyel, and Henderson. On the faceoff, Bergman. Behind the Detroit goal. A pass to Joyal. Henderson goes after it. Here Pallott is given a bump. Joyal just failed to get away. He tries it again. Turns at center. Hill has it. Trying to get away from Pallott. Played by Warham. And the Detroit goal. Warham goes down. Play is called on icing against Chicago. off in the Chicago zone to the right. And then Bobby Hull comes out along with Tico Mackey. Yeah, 
that Mackey's playing pretty well for a fellow who was meant to have a broken arm. Must have been the most over-exaggerated <laughs> break of the year. Now set to go for the faceoff. Joel shot it wide of the Chicago net. Henderson trying to center it. Vasco jams him against the board. Play is called. Bill, I might say that that was Cole's seventh goal in the five games between these two teams. He's so far ahead of everybody in this department, it isn't funny. Incidentally, the most ever... Okay, Jim, and from the faceoff, Bobby Howell behind the net. To Chico Mackey. Mackey coming in front of his own goal. Heads up to his own blue line to center ice with Pierre Pallot, who takes the pass over the line. Pallot stops. And Chico Mackey and Gansby were swinging sticks. Down for Henderson to Joyel. Over the blue line, Vasco steps into Joyelle, and Bobby Hull gets a hold of it. Over to Pierre Pallot. Pass ahead for Chico Mackey, he fell. Pallot bumps into Joyelle. Puck gets back to Chico Mackey. At center. Pass over the line for Bobby Hull, and a shot right up to Tommy Elman. Elman, over the blue line, takes the shot! <laughs> Get the assist at 1735. Scored by Allman. Assisted by Gatsby. The time 17 minutes 35. As of tonight, as of this moment. I would have to pick Chicago as the strongest team left in the round of four. Okay, here's Alman closing in with a shot. Oh, look at him. He's playing that one. up again and he fired another one and this one caught the other side of the net that's Allman sixth Bill I, he is gaining on Hull with every stride I, incidentally I just put the curse of death on Chicago by saying that they were the strongest team because they're now down 3-2 it's the first time all night the Detroit's been in front they've just kept plugging away <laughs> There's no use trying to talk against the Robert E. Lee, which is sitting right below us. I was hoping that he'd gone down the Mississippi River, but I guess the ice is still frozen. If you can hear us above this roar, those two goals by Elman were scored with dramatic suddenness and were unexpected. Five seconds, Jim. Just five seconds between them. 1735 and 1740. Elman from Gadsby tying it up 2-2 two -two at 17.35. And Elman unassisted at 17.40. Detroit lead for the first time in the game. 3-2. Three Detroit 3, Chicago 2. Both goals scored with the team playing 5 aside. On the faceoff, now it's Gadsby. A pass to Dillabo. Over the blue line, he's closing in. Goes behind the net. Ball. Ravlitz clearing it up for Hay. To Nesterenko. Nesterenko coming down the ice. Over the line, into the corner. Behind the net. Played over to the far wing. McNeil. 
took a shot, and that was stopped by Crozier, and Gadsby clears it for Godfrey. Not out. Then Godfrey intercepts the pass, coming down the ice of center, over the line to Bob Dillable, passing it to Gadsby, bearing it in, McNeil trying to bring it out, pass over for Hay, and Gadsby has it. A minute and 20 seconds remaining in the second period. Neil and Howe go to the board. And Makita checked, and Dillabo is hit by Hay. And Ravlitz turns with a pass to Makita, and it goes all the way to Gadsby. Over to Marcel Pronovo. Up at center, Parker McDonald is offside from over the checkered line at center inside the blue line. Detroit three, Chicago two. A minute and four seconds remaining in the second period. All set for the face-off. Lones takes a shot. Roger Crozier throwing it to Godfrey. Godfrey covered by Makita. How? A long pass for Parker McDonald. He's getting in on the left wing, trying to cut around Pilat. Written off by Pilat. Pilat went down. Parker McDonald trying to center it. Pilat goes to the boards, and they hold it there for a faceoff. Face off in the Chicago zone to the right. Detroit three, Chicago two. Bill, as the camera pans around here, I imagine you viewers at home can see a lot of white specks in the audience. That is the fact that great numbers of the audience have taken off their jackets and that those are in shirt sleeves. On the face off, Warren fails to get out. Hardy Howe. Trying to center it. Here, Pilat against the boards. How trying to dig it out. Makita is given a shove. Gets a hold of it. Cleared it off Warham. Out over the line. Warham feeds the pass to Moons. And Howe gets back to take it away from him. Gordy Howe. For Elman. Back to Del Vecchio. A shot. Got it wide. Goes to the corner. Moons clearing it out and down the ice. Going back forward is Marcel Pronovo. Bearing it off the boards to Godfrey. Got by Makita. Then Alma takes it away from him, and there goes the buzzer. And it ends the second period. Uh, Alma scored two goals within five seconds to give the Red Wings the lead for the first time in the game. So the score at the end of the second period is Detroit 3, Chicago Blackhawks 2. But there's a mist starting to rise at the area to our right. The players are skating around trying to get the mist off the ice. I'm glad you told me because I thought it was my glasses. <laughs> I'm glad no, that. It's starting to rise at, at where Glen Hall is. I'd say at least 50% of the men on the audience at this stage, Bill, are down to their shirts. They've taken off their jackets. Must be about 80 degrees in here now. Yeah. And, of course, they permit them to smoke in places around this building, too, which doesn't improve things. The only place that's worse is the Forum in Montreal on a night like this. Okay, Jim Ross set to start the third period. And, of course, the teams are in full strength, and it's Esposito, Bobby Hull, and Chico Mackey against Fontaine, McGregor, and Lindsay. It's back in the Chicago zone, and Elmer Vasco shoots it off the boards. Fontaine is hit by Bobby Howell. The puck goes behind the net. Palat checked by Lindsay, then gets it again. Palat to Chico Mackey. Back to Pierre Palat, number three, and he goes down the right side. Pass it over here to Vasco. Vasco up to center, and he shoots it into the Detroit zone, and it goes around on the board. Chico Mackey keeping it in with a shot. Marcel Pronovo trying to get it out. Chico Mackey right on the Lindsay stick, and he shoots it down the ice. That's going over the red line, and that is icing. And although there is a bit of a haze, that ice is still very fast. Yes, there have been a couple of bad spots all night, though, Bill, even before the game started. 
feet as the command number comes around now just where number 16 is skating there's a very bad spot to the side of the Detroit net it's been that way since before the game started I'm ready to go now for the face off in the Detroit zone to the left and Packer McDonald comes out now with Gordy Howe and Del Vecchio they actually had dropped the puck and of course the call comes from the linesman, not the referee. The referee concentrates on the face-off and the face-off only. And it's up to the linesman to call the players coming off the bench. The referee is John Ashley, number three. The linesmen are Neil Armstrong, number eight. And Bill Morris and number 16. Alman scoring two goals in the second period in the space of five seconds to give Detroit the lead, three to two, which they enjoy at this point. On the face-off, Bergman passes to Packer McDonald. Off Pierre Palat. He's grabbed by Del Vecchio. How oh, nearly gets loose on the right wing. Hey, back for it. To Nestorenko, number 15. Shot it over for Hay on the right side. Packer McDonald clears it in, and that's offside. We're at the 115 mark. Of this third period Detroit 3 Chicago Blackhawks 2 Bergman over to Gadsby up for Del Vecchio his backhand is wide it bounces into the corner Red Stanfield right to Del Vecchio who shot it right on and Glenn Hall stopped it on the short side Al, Del Vecchio, Packer McDonald, Gadsby, and Bergman. And from the faceoff, Chicago with Elmer Vasco going behind the net. Shoots it off the boys for Bill Hay. Bill Hay coming down this left side to center. Over the blue line with Stan Field. It's offside. Stan Field on this left wing in advance of the puck carrier. Nestorenko from Holland Ravlich, 837. Lindsay from Bergman and Anderson, 1919. Of the first period, it was a 1-1 tie. Detroit outshot Chicago in the first period, 12 to 10. Bergman to Del Vecchio. Up with Howe. Over for Packer McDonald. Offside, he had it in, out, and in again. Off his skate. Second period scoring, Hull from Vasco and Moans at 14.59. Then Elman from Gadsby at 17.35. Alman unassisted at 17-40. Detroit out shooting Chicago 10-9. And outscoring them 2-1 and lead 3-2 as we're playing in this third period. There are five penalties in the first period. Three to Chicago and two to Detroit. And four in the second period. Two apiece. Into the crowd goes that shot. And have another face off. I think, Bill, that Detroit appears to be deliberately slowing down the pace of the game at this point. I don't blame them very much. It's very hot in this building. And now, with, the, with dramatic unexpectedness, they took that one goal lead. They can afford to sit back and force Chicago to carry the play to them. I think it was quite nice to go in the early part of the second period that the Chicago Blackhawks were forcing the issue by playing up in the Detroit zone. True. On the faceoff, it's Moans back to Al McNeil, over to Matt Ravlich. He shoots the puck into the Detroit zone. It goes to the corner. Lloyd Smith trying to bring it out. Makita back to McNeil, a shot right on, and Kozier stopped that. Played out over the line, Ravlich brought it in outside. Bauman, Smith, Dillabo. Martha Prunavu and Warren Godfrey. On the faceoff, Moans takes his shot into the corner. Dan Makita lets Marcel Prunavu get a hold of it. Rablitz moves up. Marcel Prunavu falls. Bob Dillavo works his way out of the left wing. Long pass for Smith. He's getting it on goal. He's the side of the net. Al McNeil. Shooting it off the boards, but not out. Smith trying to get it through to Elman. And Makita up at center ice. Takes a long shot wide. Crozier shot it into the corner. 
Bob Dillabo. Getting away from Makita. Trying to bring it out. He's covered, and Elman gets a hold of it. Army Elman. Up to Smith. Cordillabo. Over the line. Ravlich covers him. Dillabo gets the puck loose. Landed it. And it's picked off by Moans to Warren. Over the line for Moans. Moans couldn't get to it as Godfrey gets in there to cover up. It's against the boards, and there's no further period. And there comes Hull again. Bobby Hull's out there, and Dennis Rice, uh, not only that, but now Dennis Hull is out as well. On the left side, number 10. Bergman, watched by Bobby Hull, down goes Bergman. Joyelle, a pass for Jeffrey, feeding it out to Henderson. Dennis Hull is there to skate him off. Shooting it to Bobby Hull. Bobby Hull chased into his own goal. The Elmer Vasco. Up to Dennis Hull, a backhand. Back forward is Bergman. Bergman is knocked up out of the play by Hull. Now it's Joyelle. A long pass to Larry Jeffrey. Takes his shot and that's wide. Dennis Hull. Bearing it around into the corner. Down goes Joyelle. A pass for Bobby Hull. Larry Jeffrey shot it in. Right up by Tico Mackey. Nico Mackey over the blue line. Trying to cut around. Takes a shot. Bobby Hull missed the rebound. Joyelle. Checked by Tico Mackey. To Bobby Hull. He's over the blue line. Back to Dennis Hull and Henderson has it to Joyelle. Going down the ice. For Henderson. And it's outside at the blue line. Called by Linesman New Armstrong. The score is Detroit 3, Chicago Blackhawks 2, at the 4.36 mark of the third period. Now Fontaine, number 11, with Bruce McGregor, 16, and Ted Lindsay, number 15, on the left wing. Canfield, Hay, and Nesarenko, the shot goes to Glenn Hall off the net. Al McNeil bringing it out now with a pass for Nesarenko. It stopped. McNeil after it, clears it on a backhand down the ice. Marcel Cronovo is going back for it. It's over the red line. It's touched, and that's icing. Coming up to the five-minute mark now in the third period in six seconds. On the faceoff, hey, I'm Chicago, a pass ahead to Nesterenko, at center, here's over to Stanfield on the left wing, trying to go through, he gets his backhand, Crozier steering it to Lindsay, off the boards for Fontaine, too hard for him, Ravlitz to McNeil, McNeil shoots it in, and Crozier stops it, and it's cleared by Provo over to Lindsay, Lindsay coming down the ice at center, over for McGregor, and... Glenn Hall came out, Fontaine goes after it, it's against the board. Ravlich, trying to bring it out, does, up the center. Shooting it into the Detroit zone, Rozier lets it go. Fontaine, getting away from two players, McGregor down the right wing, over the line, and Ravlich gets back to cover up. Ravlich to Hay, he hit Lindsay. Ravlitz then to Stanfield, over the blue line. Try to pass back for Nesterenko, Fontaine shooting it out. Cleared back into the Detroit zone. McGregor shooting it out. Al McNeil. West End Makita. McNeil takes a long shot. Crozier steered it off to Lindsay. Lindsay can't get it out, and Makita's shot comes to Warren Godfrey. Warren Godfrey coming down the ice with Howe. Over the line. Then a pass for Howell, and it was broken up by Elmer Vasco, who gives it to Nesterenko for Moe, stopped by Howell. And Godfrey's right there on the spot to shoot it in again. Now it's 
And here Palat shooting it down the ice. Gary Bergman, number 18, over to Bill Gadsby, number four, up to Gordy Howe. Takes a long shot, that foul. That all stopped. Elmer Vasco to Stan Makita. Passing it back to Vasco, ahead to Makita. At center, over the blue line, he's checked. Acker McDonald to Alex Del Vecchio. Gordy Howe picks it up, over the line. Takes his shot, that line. Asby moves up with a backhand. He's hit by Warren. Here's a chance for Parker McDowell, right to Del Vecchio. Just the short side. And Makita, off the board. Stopped by Howe. Howe right in front of Del Vecchio. Knocked down from behind with the backhand. Cleared, but not out. Here's Howe with it again. The Parker McDonald. His shot hit Vasco, and he tapped it out over the blue line. Bergman to Gadsby. Over to Bergman. Up to Howe. Over the line. Howe barges through. The puck goes to Glenn Hall. He shoots it off the glass. Abby Howe trying to get away. He's covered. Howe gets a hold of the backhand. Glenn Hall stopped that. Vasco shoots at the length of the ice. Over the red line. Gadsby back to touch it. Icing is the call, and this game is coming to your direct from the Detroit Olympia. How's it go? Bobby Howe out there again with Dennis Howe and Chico Mackey. Bobby Howe. He hit Bob Dillabo. Pass over on the right wing for Chico Mackey. Here's the pass for Dennis Howe. Getting into the clear. Roger Crozier came out of the net to knock it out to the wing. Pass for Doug Jarrett, broken up by Elmer. Pass intended for Smith, broken up by the Hawks. Nico Mackey, a backhand, that goes into the crowd. Played eight minutes and 42 seconds of this third period. Detroit leading three to two. They're changing at every opportunity now, Bill. Detroit particularly is pouring them over the boards. Trying to face off against the boards again. It goes loose over to Ravlich. Matt Ravlich at center gets over that red line. The shot is wide. The rebound goes to Bob Dillabo. Behind the net for Isel Protovo. Up the ice to center. He's checked by Chico Mackey, who in turn was checked by Dillabo. Dillabow is caught with a high stick. And that was strictly accidental. No question about that. It's getting quite steamy out there in the ice, Bill, but do not adjust your sense. <laughs> this fog comes to you through the courtesy of our sponsors. <laughs> Extremely warm here in the Detroit Olympia as the fog starts to settle on the ice surface. Goes back of Crozier. That's Bergman with it behind the net. He shoots it off the boards, down the ice to center. Matt Ravlich is there over to Jarrett. He shot it over to the far wing and Larry Jeffrey intercepts. Carrying it to an open wing, Eddie Joyelle moves up. Shooting it into the Chicago zone. Matt Ravlich goes back for it. Down went Paul Henderson, a pass for Dennis Howe, up over the blue line for Bobby Howe, over the blue line, Bobby Howe trying to get through, Henderson is knocked down, cleared out over the blue line, Doug Jarrett shoots it right back into the Detroit zone, and McGregor comes over the boards, Harry Bergman, up to Larry Jeffrey, to Bill Gadsby, at center, over the line for McGregor and he couldn't reach it. Larry Jeffrey shoots it in. Johnny McKenzie's out there for the first time. Number 18 for Chicago. There's a the bucket behind the net. Then Hall came out to cover to Bobby Hall. Over to Pierre Pilat. Back to Bobby Hall. He's over the blue line. There's the shot. It's a weak one and wide. Bill Gansby. Off the boards for Jeffrey, can't get it out, then he does, he hooked it off here for stick. Donnie McKenzie shoots it in offside. 
and it's all green by the blue line. And we break the 10, 33 mark of the third period. Jim? I don't know how they're going to last out this next 10 minutes, or almost 10 minutes, Bill. This pace has been crackling tonight. The first period, of which, of course, many of our audience, unfortunately, didn't see on television, was one of the most, it was carried on at one of the most blazing speeds I've seen all year. And from the face-off, Camille Henry tuning it into the Detroit zone. Marcel Cronable faded, but not out. Camille Henry for Bill Esposito, and he handed it right to Marcel Cronable to Bruce McGregor. McGregor gets over the red line, shooting it back into the Chicago zone. Glenn Hall out of the net. On team, trying to center it. Neil Henry shooting it into the corner on the other side. Johnny McKenzie back for it. Now he starts out, getting away from a check. Pallott back to McKenzie over the line. Stops to Camille Henry. And he shot it right on to Fontaine's stick. Back to McGregor. With Lindsay on his left. Takes the pass. Lindsay is there to McKenzie. McKenzie jumps Lindsay and gets the game. Chicago penalty. McKenzie. Two minutes for slashing. The time slashing is 11 minutes, 11 26, 26 seconds. Detroit three, Chicago two. Alman, Smith, Bob Dillabo. Gordy Howe and Alex Del Vecchio. Alman picks the puck up. Made it back to Del Vecchio. Del Vecchio took his shot. Alman goes after it, poking it to Bob Dillabo. Hit the side of the net, digs it out again. Alman goes in to help. Alman comes up with it behind the net. Sanded it right in front. Bill Hay kicks it up for Chicago. Goes back in his own zone and then finds an opening and shoots it to center. Now, to Smith. Lloyd Smith at center. Shooting it. And it's offside. It was in and out. But it was brought out by the Detroit player, Ullman, so that, of course, is offside. Seven minutes and 52 seconds remaining in the third period. Three to two, Detroit. Now over to Del Vecchio, he's in over the line, there's the shot, and that was wide. Del Hay can't get it out, how to Smith, it's cleared and deflected by Hay off Ravlich's shot, down the ice. Alex Del Vecchio with Bob Dillabo. Back to Howe, up the center. Over to Del Vecchio, he shoots it into the corner, Hay after it. Holding it against the boards, then he... Dillabo races after it. Hay gets his skate on it and holds it there for a face-off in the Chicago zone of the lap. Detroit playing every man up. Gadsby comes over the boards with Bergman. Incidentally, Bill, these two fellows, Bergman and Warren Godfrey, have been filling in very well. Uh, said Abel had to shake up his defensive pairs. He put Cron over all one of his veterans with one, and Gadsby with the other after Barkley got hurt in the first minute and 41 seconds. Seven minutes, 18 seconds remaining in regulation time. Gadsby, a pass to Smith. He tried to center it the flex up to center ice. Bergman to Gadsby, back to Bergman on the left wing. He flips it right into the Chicago zone, and Matt Radlich shoots it right back to Bergman. Bergman now coming up with Ullman. He shot it off the boards, had to go back for it. Ullman still with it. To Floyd Smith, over to Dillabo, over the line. Back to Bergman, there's the shot. Then Hall caught it and holds it for a face off. Eddie Joyelle with Henderson and Jeffrey. There's the shot. Jeffrey, another shot. And it came around on the boards to warm. Now then, Johnny McKenzie's back on the ice. Bergman clearing it for Jeffrey. Going the wrong way. Bergman tries it again to Joyelle. 
And then Henderson gets it over the line. Jeffrey after it. Back to Henderson. And he got his shot away, but it was deflected wide. Bones trying to get away on this left side with Makita. They're over the line. Closing in a pass. And Warren couldn't get to it. Makita went down. Jeffrey went into the board. Back up on his skates. Here comes Chicago over the blue line. Here Pallotta is shoved and knocked down by Bergman. Play is called. Five minutes, 55 seconds remaining in regulation time. Detroit three, Chicago two. There is Bill Gadsby, who is becoming a great debater as the season progresses. I always think that his voice improves as the playoffs go on. Usually about the seventh game of the finals, he's in great form. On the faceoff, it's cleared down the ice to center. Masco shoots it back in again. That bounce. Rozier just got a piece of it. Dan Makita trying to center it. Marcel Pronovo goes to the board. Then Lindsay and Makita swing at each other. Palat gets into it. and Lindsay will get penalties. Pallott wanted to fight Lindsay there too and Lindsay looked as if he wouldn't have minded fighting both of them, Bill. After all, I think he's, he's already got an all-time record in regular season play but the penalty record for the Stanley Cup playoffs eludes him and this is a good spot where he can pick up about 10. Detroit penalty, Lindsay. Two minutes apiece for roughing. The time, 14 minutes, 17 seconds. 14 minutes and 17 seconds. The time of the roughing penalty to Makita and Lindsay. So it's war of Bones. Doug Jarrett. And Pierre Pilat. Now Fontaine, Bruce McGregor, Marcel Pronovo, and Warren Godfrey. Godfrey to Marcel Pronovo. Coming up slowly. Back to Godfrey. Out over the blue line to center. Takes a long shot. Then Hall deflected into the corner. Fontaine to McGregor. Back to Marcel Pronovo. A shot right on. And Ben Hall made the save. Garrett. Tech. McGregor has it on the right side there. Takes a shot. Bill has it. Trying to center it. Here Pallott. To Doug Moans, coming down the ice to center. Over for Warham. Marcel Pronovo gets in ahead of him. Moans tries to get it out in front. Warham after it. Moans to Jarrett, and Fontaine is there. And to McGregor. Over the blue line. Got it in. Here Pallant turns. 4.45 remaining in the third period. Here's Bobby Howell. How after him. Down the ice he goes. Over the line. And Howe gets back as Bergman took Tico Mackey out of the play. Bernie Howe to Alex Del Vecchio. Del Vecchio to center. Over for Bergman. He shoots it in. Jarrett back for it. Four minutes and 16 seconds remaining in regulation time. Lead it to Detroit. Up for Bobby Howe at center right. Over the blue line. He was hooked by Howell. There's going to be a penalty here to Howell, I think. It goes to the corner. Comes back to McNeil. Play is called. Howell went down. After running into McNeil. Howell. Getting a penalty. Chicago, the odd man advantage, five men to four. How? A hooking Two penalty at 1557. Here's the last. 
Keeps it in. Knocks it off the board. Hellman gets a hold of it and kicks it down the ice. It's behind Glenn Hall. Bobby Hull. Coming up now for Chicago. At his own blue line. At center. A pass to Pierre Pilate. He's over the blue line. Cutting in from the right side. Goes behind the net. Trying to center it. It's against the board. Pilate. Trying to keep it in. Gadsby gets it out to McGregor with Ullman. Over the line for Ullman. Goes after it. Standing it right to the McGregor can't get to it. Godfrey comes over the boards to replace Marcel Pronovo. Hey, is checked. Ullman gets a hold of it. Howe is still in the penalty box. Gadsby to Godfrey. Back to Ullman. Over the line. Ullman going right in that goal. He shoots the goal. Ullman from Gadsby and Godfrey, and it's now Detroit 4, Chicago Blackhawks 2. And that goal came just two seconds after Gordy Howe got out of the penalty box, right. although he didn't have a chance to engage in the play. However, it wound up with four Detroit men up there around the net when, uh, when Ullman popped it into the open corner. Now ready to go for the face-off, Bill Vecchio facing off against Anfield. Goes to Packer McDonald, Gordy Howe. Alex Del Vecchio's shot goes to Nestorenko. Nestorenko, a pass over here to Al McNeil. Al McNeil trying to get it out. It's shot down off Gordy Howe into the Detroit zone, and Bill Gadsby's back for it behind the net. Gadsby shoots it around on the boards to Packer McDonald. Packer McDonald over here to Gordy Howe, up at center. He shoots it in to the Chicago zone. We have a minute and 30 seconds remaining in the third period. Lead off the board. How is checked. Sandfield up at center over to Nestorenko over the line outside. Called by lines of Bill Morris. Bill, when they swept that green object from the ice, I was gratified to see that it wasn't moving for a while. I thought it <laughs> might have been the longest and biggest caterpillar in the history of the insect world. <laughs> On the face-off. Del Vecchio bats the puck down the ice with his glove. That'll be icing. It definitely went over the red line. And there's Bill Gasby again saying a few words to the referee. Yes, he's getting ready. He should have a good final if Detroit gets in there. You notice too, Bill, that the cabinet is out there now in the moment of stress when they want to hang on to this two goal lead. They're all there. Howell, Gadsby, Thornaball, and Del Vecchio. Now set for the face-off in the Detroit zone to the right. Red Stanfield with Eric Nesterenko. Also Camille Henry, Bill Hay, and Matt Ravlich. The shot knocked down by Marcel Thornaball. Thornaball, and there's Normie Elman. Elman with it at the blue line. Pass over to Howell. Howe, given a shove, goes into the Chicago zone. Camille Henry bring it back. Less than a minute to go in the third period. Up the ice for Hay. Stopped by Marcel Pronovo. Nesterenko. Right on the Gadsby stick. With Ullman. Ullman racing after it. Then lets it go as Ravlis gets in ahead of him. 33 seconds remaining. In this third period, as Sandfield turns behind his own net. There's a pass on the left wing. Here he comes himself to center. Up to the Detroit blue line. Lost it there to Bill Gadsby. Over on the wing there, Alex Del Vecchio. Gives it back to Marcel Pronovo. 15 seconds. Gadsby. To Marcel Pronovo. Back to Gadsby. Gadsby waits to Howe. Up to Elman. For Del Vecchio, he lets it go. It goes in behind Glenn Hall. One second, there's all the money to get the And 
the Red Wings. Hit by Normie Elman. Three goals. Have come through to defeat the Chicago Blackhawks. 4-2. The final score of tonight's game. The Trent Red Wings 4 and the Chicago Blackhawks 2. Well, Bob Nevin, your three stars and your reasons. Well, my three stars tonight, Ward, are Norm Hellman, first star, Bobby Hull, second star, and Roger Crozier, third star. Uh, I don't think I have to reason very much for picking Normie Hellman as my first star. Any guy that can score the tying, winning, and clinching goal in a Stanley Cup uh, playoff deserves that. Uh, my second choice, Bobby Hull, I thought he uh, dominated the game when he was out in the ice. For unfortunately for Chicago, he couldn't play the whole game. Uh, he did set up the first Chicago goal and scored the second one, and he is my second choice. Uh, Roger Crozier, I thought in the first period particularly, when uh, Chicago looked like they, they might uh, control the game, uh, stopped the two I mentioned uh, previous uh, on Kenny Warm and on Bobby Hall. I thought he kept them in the game until the third period when uh, Norm Ullman took over. Well, Norm's with us now. Congratulations on a great game, Norm. Thank you very much, Ward. Congratulations, Norman. Thank you, uh, Did you not, uh, I thought tonight, uh, when most of the players uh, seemed to be tiring a little from the heat, I thought you'd come on real strong and uh, uh, we were mentioning in, in the press box that you didn't look quite as sharp as you had during the latter part of the season, but then the second, third period, uh, you looked like you got real interested and scored the three goals. <laughs> I think after I scored that first and from way out like that, it kind of perks the fellow up. Both teams, uh, I think, were extremely tired and nobody could seem to get a concentrated attack going. We were yes. just lucky to score a couple from that far out. Yes, uh, did you know that you had broken the record for the fastest two goals in the Stanley Cup uh, competition? No, I didn't even think about it. So, <laughs> hey, uh, scored uh, last year in seven seconds, and yours tonight were in five. All right. What about the heat out there tonight, Norm? Did it really affect uh, the overall play of the lines? I think it must have, yeah. Everyone seemed to find it real tough going. Was the ice itself slow? Or? Yes, the ice was real slow, and uh, the hum humidity was real bad. It seemed hard to get going. <laughs> With a nice, uh, uh, tonight when the ice is like it is, we, Bob and I were mentioning the number of offsides that Chicago were getting tonight. Now, is this oftentimes when the person with the puck can't go as quickly as the others, or? Uh, no, I think that's more or less their style of play. That happens quite a bit. Uh, they get those wingmen breaking and they just keep going. And if, the, if they get the puck in uh, to them on time, well then they're going to have a real good chance at scoring. Well, uh, Norm, if they keep getting the puck into you uh, like they did tonight, you're going to keep on scoring. Thanks very much, and again, our congratulations. Thanks to you, Bob, our other guests as well. The shots on goal tonight, the Red Wings outshot Chicago, 30 to 25. A reminder that we'll be back with you on Tuesday night for the next game in the Toronto Canadian Series, and the final score here in Olympia tonight, Detroit 4, Chicago 2. The Hawks would win the series in seven with Bobby Hall providing most of the offense, scoring eight goals. The Hawks would head to the final to meet the Montreal Canadiens. Chicago would end up coming up short, however, losing to the Habs in seven. Thanks for watching Vintage Games here on the NHL Network. I'm Dan Pollard.